It's a gridiron doubleheader this Saturday as Florida visits South Carolina at noon. Then Georgia Southern plays Elon on Savannah's UPN, WGSA. WGSA. And he just gets the ball mm -hmm. over the line of scrimmage before he went out of bounds. Great effort, great touchdown. So the point after now by number 82, Sean Holland. And it's perfect. The point after attempt is good. Your score, the Eagles 7 and the Phoenix nothing. So, 7 to nothing for Georgia Southern. We'll be right back after a word from our local sponsors. This is the Football Network. Seven to nothing is the score. And now Elon will get the ball back on offense as Jonathan Dudley prepares to kick off. Strong legged, and down there is number 23, Rashad Palmer, among others. TJ Clegg defers. In fact, Clegg has the ball and comes across close to the 20 yard line. Phoenix, number 27, TJ Clegg. The touchdown is Davis with that little move there and just inside the pylon. Nice move. 
right on the borderline between stepping out of bounds and getting the touchdown, and he got the touchdown call. I got the, uh, the Georgia Southern 164 and 20 when they score first. Ouch. Yeah, I'll say. So Anthony Cruz, the freshman quarterback, his star runner, Palmer, has gained only one yard so far on one carry, and now his second carry, and he's finding the yardage very tough on that right side. So Palmer on the right side and nothing doing there. They're going to call it a generous gain of one yard. So second down and nine. Well, anytime you push the pile forward, they got to give you at least a yard. <laughs> and of course, the defense you know, plays with a lot of guys close to the line to stop the running game. And the play fake. Cruz will tuck it under and try to make something out of it. For the Phoenix, so Cruz seven. out across the 25-yard line to the 26. And that play by Cruz is, is just what we talked about earlier in the game, about him growing during the course of the year. Earlier in the year, he would have let that ball go, and maybe it would have been caught, and probably by the other team as an interception. But that time, he pulled it down and ran, and I think it will present more opportunities if, if he continues to do that today. And last week under pressure against Appalachian State, he threw four interceptions. He's thrown 15 this year overall against just one touchdown pass. Third and three. And nothing happening, so he tries to make it happen himself and is brought down. And the tackle is made by Derek Butler. Let's see how they spot the ball this time. They're going to be very close to a first down. Here, look, look who's coming up to make the tackle there, Paul. Mm -hmm. Mr. Butler. We talked about it at the beginning of the game, number 43. There he is. He's going to be there. He's not really uh, shadowing the quarterback, but when the quarterback runs, most of the time it will be his responsibility to come up because in their passing attack, their best passing play may be the quarterback running out of shotgun. He had some room there for a minute, but they got up there and, and shut it down. Let's see how close it is to a first down. They got it. The Elan faithful are happy about that. Yeah, that woke the crowd up. Cool afternoon, overcast, had a lot of rain earlier, but no rain in the last couple hours or so. Not as cold as they said it was going to be today, and everybody's happy about that, but maybe we'll see the sun in the second half. Because I know the coach told them they don't have to worry about the games that came before that. This is the game that you're going to remember for the rest of your life. That last game of the season. A seniors day, and several of the seniors and their parents were on the field being honored before the game. And Kang to the right side, pushing the pile, keeping the legs moving, gaining a couple of yards before he is just uh, brought down by the entire defense of Georgia Southern, to look like. Well, Georgia Southern is really pursuing to the ball. You can see how many white shirts are getting up after that tackle. And you can see most of the team was clumped around there. So I got to think we're going to be looking for some kind of uh, maybe a reverse later or something to slow up that Georgia Southern pursuit. Well, the defensive backs, uh, number 21, Deion Stokes, uh, number 32, Terrence McBride, uh, kind of feel lonely out there as they, they stand and watch and uh, hope something is thrown in their direction. Yeah, and the other nine men are getting in on tackles. <laughs> <laughs> now we see they have number 16, AJ, a, AK Keys, as one of the defensive backs. But again, it's a running play and nothing doing. Nothing doing as Robert Locke, again, making a big tackle as uh, Palmer tried to gain the necessary yardage, and he, in fact, lost a couple of yards instead. It's very frustrating for a running back when they get hit in the backfield. Very difficult to get your game going when as soon as you touch the ball, you're getting smacked. Now into the game is number 11, C.W. Singletary on offense. He had been uh, one of the quarterbacks this season as well. They put him out as a wide out to the bottom of your screen, number 11 on third and nine from the 30-yard line as Elon tries to generate some offense. It's going to be a run for Cruz. He has the first down. Nice run to the 45-yard line. Butler brings him down. He had to pursue him quite a bit of distance up the field. Well, we talked about that their best pass play may be a quarterback draw. Here he goes back. He looks and runs right up the middle for good yardage, and he came out in a formation that time, Paul, that spread the defense out 
and left the middle open, and Cruz took advantage of it. Well, he was only averaging a yard, a little over a yard and a half rushing this year, and he has uh, done very good on the ground in this game. This is Palmer, big opening, and he could go all the way. He should, and he will all oh, the way, Rashad down. Palmer. Blocking by the line, open the hole. Phoenix, number 39, William Rawls. Let's look at that play coming at your right side. Great lead blocking by both lead blockers. And he jumped right through the hole. And that was the end of it. He goes all the way. He hit, he hit, he hit. And then the extra point goes up, and that's good. And now we're all tied up. Five minutes and 13 seconds left here at Elon. We'll be right back after a word from our local sponsors. This is the Football Network. Lots of enthusiasm here at Elon on Seniors Day after Rashad Palmer scores his sixth touchdown of the season. A 55-yard run. So Al Seagraves and Mike Seawalk battling today. They're very good friends. They had a long conversation at the walkthrough yesterday about how their respective seasons have gone. And now they go back to battling one another. As Georgia Southern to receive the kickoff. And now just as the approach was made, the whistles... Stopped everything. Delay of game penalty. Usually you don't see a delay of game on a kickoff. Rawls, number 39, to try it again. And it's in the air. On the return for the Bit of an opening for Teddy Kraft. And a, Teddy Kraft. there was a late flag, flag in on the pile. So Kraft with his short return. And referee Lewis Foreman says it is holding on Georgia Southern. Let's take another look at the touchdown. Holding on the receiving team. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Fans Bank of America is a proud partner of Elon University Palmer. Football. Experience the great services that Bank of America offers by visiting any of their many locations. And experience the fun that Bank of America brings to Road Stadium by visiting the Bank of America. So with the penalty, the ball is back at the 27-yard line. As I see Watt wondering what's happening here in a tie game with five minutes and seven seconds to go in the first quarter. Chaz Williams to pass. Overthrown. So a rare pass. This one intended for Anderson. Second down. I guess you have to show pass eventually to keep the defense from just crowding in there and expecting to run all the time. Second down and 10 from the 27 yard line. This is Davis. Let's go downstairs now to Dan Jansen. Well, guys, if you remember back in the first series, number 73, Emerson Pazikas for Elon was injured on the play. It was his right ankle. It was, and they taped it up, uh, and it looked like he was trying to get back in, but it is not certain if he's going to return. He did not return to the game now. He's limping around in the back of the bench right now. We're going to give it a rest and see how it gets, uh, see how it feels a bit later. Paul? Thank you, Dan. 
So sec uh, first down on that run by Davis. He has been a surprise ball carrier today for Georgia Southern. And Williams pitches to Anderson. Anderson has another first down, a 12-yard run, and there's a flag at the end of the play at midfield. There's a flag on the field. I don't know if somebody got a hand in there on the face mask or not. But Lewis Foreman, nope, it's a hold. Another hold on Georgia Southern. So Georgia Southern with a spate of penalties here in the last five minutes or so. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. Repeat first down. Ben's purchased your copy of today's football game day. So Mike Seawalk, 17 and 7 at Georgia Southern, 6 and 4 this year. Nice job of bringing the ball in for Anderson. It was pitched a little bit behind him. And he crosses midfield. And now into Elon territory. Well, you can see on the replay, they're still using that double wing formation with a great effect. Again, it spreads that defense out, makes them play even-handedly, and the defense can get one-on-one -on -one situations where they can take advantage. Very difficult when their leading rusher is the fullback. And if you have to stop him, how can you stop a sweep at the same time? Very difficult. Number six, Austin, is the top player, and there he goes with the ball as Davis was in there right next to Jermaine Austin. So Jermaine Austin, only 5'8", listed at 5'8", 198. You get in his way, and he's going to try and uh, make you pay for it. If you can see him. I mean, yeah. you can see right there how short he is. I mean, not, not many of the other guys are that tall, but he's pretty short. But look how he takes the ball, two hands on it, and it's very hard for the defenders to get under him to get leverage to bring him down. So he usually bounces off the first would-be tackler. Williams will try his luck at passing again, and the long one is intercepted with ease in the secondary by Dwayne Imes. Imes trying to make something happen as he comes to the near side and is brought down. But after the interception, Kevin Davis makes the tackle, and somebody missed something somewhere because there was no white shirt in the neighborhood where that uh, pass was thrown. Well, this is similar to the play they had to pass interference on earlier. And he's throwing deep, but his receiver, you can see at the bottom of the screen, had stopped on an out pattern. So the signals were crossed, and the defensive back made a great play making the interception. And Dwayne Imes comes up, and now Elon has the ball back with a chance to go ahead. So an injury, and that is number 66 for Georgia Southern, Travis Ames out of Madison, Florida, and gingerly walking off the field with the assistance from the training staff. So we'll keep an eye on that. Now the turnover story. In the first eight games, 12. Last two games, six. The defense has allowed only three touchdowns and three field goals. We talked about how the defense has had to kind of rise to the occasion after the offense gives up the ball. Yeah, especially in the last two games, Paul. The, usually the Georgia Southern uh, team is known to be a very intelligent, no mistakes. They did not beat themselves. But a team that turns over the ball puts themselves in peril of beating themselves, and that's what they're doing so far today with that interception. This is Anthony Cruz, the quarterback, who has proven... Uh, to be elusive as a runner himself today. And this is the running back Palmer. And Rashad maneuvering up the middle. Oh, there's a late hit. There's going to be a penalty on number 70, the left guard, David Ware, for hitting after the play was blown dead. He took a little extra shove at a defender. After the play was over, personal foul on the offense. 15-yard penalty in the end of the run. Second down. So 3.23 to go, and where is the guilty party? Well, those are the kind of uh, penalties that drive coaches crazy, but where you can imagine this could be his last college game, and he's going to play as hard as he possibly can 
And here he comes just a little late, putting a little touch <laughs> on the defensive back. And that was uh, Tariq Mohammed uh, on the receiving end of that blow. Tariq wasn't expecting that. After the whistle was blown dead, you kind of relax, don't you? Well, you shouldn't against this team. <laughs> so now it is second and 19. Back on the 13-yard line. And a short running play. Maybe gains one. So Palmer is the ball carrier. And uh, I think the officials, Gene, might have to step in and, and take a little bit better control of the game. It looks as though the players now are starting to take a little, get the, as they say, chippy in the piles. Yeah, that was Brandon uh, Mason there, number 76, the center. And if it's going to be uh, some pushing around, he's going to be in the middle of it. He, he's maybe the best player on this entire team, and they're hoping that he comes back as a redshirt senior for some uh, graduate studies next year. Derek Neal comes in, number 82, as a wideout, and he is in the slot to the top of your screen, the slot right. On third and 19, perhaps we will see a pass out of the shotgun now from Cruz. Remember, Cruz has thrown 15 interceptions this season. Lots of time, and the short pass is complete to Palmer. Palmer to the 20-yard line, and is still short of the first down by about nine yards. So they kind of spread out the field and let uh, Palmer, as another flag has been thrown, by the way, let Palmer try to do something on his own to improvise. Yeah, he's the kind of guy you want to get into the open field with the ball, if at all possible. After the play was over, personal foul on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. So is that like an eye for an eye type penalty? You have one personal foul on Elon. Now the personal foul back a few minutes later on Georgia Southern. Well, it looks like they're a little excited down there. Mm -hmm. and, and it's great to be excited, but you got to be smart about it. And you can't beat yourself. Here you are. You're ready to get the ball. And now you come up and make a penalty. Here is a screenplay. Very well set up. There's Palmer coming in. And looked like it might have been uh, number 47 coming in over the top late, which would have been uh, John Mooring. Palmer tries to skip to the outside, but lost his footing as Locke gets up. Robert Locke, number 95, and shakes his head as if to say, nope, not on my side. Try it again later. So second down as we take a look at some scores. East Tennessee State, 68, Chattanooga, 7. Well, that's, that's the way to leave the conference. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I'll say. And leave football. VMI over the Citadel, 21 to 14 in Appalachian State. A winner last week over Elon with a lead. And Wofford uh -oh, already. Upset. Wofford already the conference champion, though. Kind of a, a, maybe a tune-up game. And a short running play on that left side. But you don't want to go into the playoffs at all on a downer, even if you have the, the conference uh, championship. Nope, no such thing as a, a tune-up at the end of the season. you got to keep Mo on your side of the field, and that's momentum. And if you do not, it is very difficult to get it back. Uh, Appalachian State, you just saw their score. They still have a, a long shot to be named into the to the playoffs. One double-A is, is winding up and soon will be getting into the playoff season. And a lot of people wish that uh, Division I did it like Division I-A. Exactly. I've been uh, hoping for that for many years and many more years to come, probably. Under a minute to go in the first quarter, 7-7 tie. As Cruz looks right side, throws over there, and it's incomplete. And maybe one of the reasons for his interceptions, Gene, is that he seems to lock on to one spot on the field, and when he throws it, everybody knows he's throwing to that spot because he doesn't look anywhere else. Well, I don't know, Paul. It's hard to say that now. That time, he was, thought his receiver was going to keep coming, and his receiver stopped. So it, it just comes from not having a lot of chance to work with the receivers and knowing where they will be when you throw the ball. Anthony Tarowski to punt, and uh, number two, Lewis Barr, back to receive it. And Barr is going to let it roll. He picks it at the 20-yard line and doesn't know what to do. He gives ground, continues to give ground. There's another flag on the play as he's brought down in a pile at the 17-yard line. And uh, as they unpile, everybody is uh, going to their respective uh, going to their respective corners. <laughs> but we'll well, see that's the way it's been so far. Yeah, they've, they've been taking some licks. And again, you just I keep coming back to this. And I remember my last college game. I didn't know if I was ever going to play again. And you just want to, don't want to leave anything. I didn't even see that hold. The blocker down there was, was having a, a difficult time getting out of the way so he wouldn't clip. So he avoided a clip, but, but maybe he ended up holding. Legal blocking. Um, 
I love that call, illegal block in the back, but the, guess what? There, there's no legal block in the back. But in this case, it was a block in the back, and it was illegal. Now, you got him pinned up, and, and Elon has got to like the way things are going so far. Tied 7-7 seven to seven here in the first quarter. With only 34 seconds remaining. And deep in their own territory, Georgia Southern starts on the 7th. Running play up the middle for the quarterback, Chaz Williams, the junior. Thinks that's the first time we've seen that option today. Uh, Chaz has been handing off or pitching. That time he faked to the fullback and then followed coming right up. And again, it just presents so many uh, options that the defense has to be aware of. Because the last time on that look, they had to worry about a sweep. So imagine the inside defensive guy getting ready to run out for a sweep, and here's the quarterback running right by inside. Now, Coach Mike Seawalk has to be just beside himself. Another penalty on his team. As we get the explanation, we hope, from Lewis Foreman. Shift on the offense. Penalty will be half the distance to go. Repeat first down. A lot of times when you see that call, two people are moving at the same time. Once everybody gets set, only one man can go in motion. So if, while the man is in motion, someone else shifts in the backfield. That is called illegal motion, and I believe that's what happened that time. You don't want to see the head coach on the sidelines scratching his chin as if to say, what is going on here? Well, I know that the Elon coach is happy because now it's uh, first and 15. From the three. And Williams will keep the ball himself and is spilled as he reaches the 10-yard line. Tackle made by Dwayne Imes as the first quarter has come to an end. Fans, that's the end of the first quarter of play. Your score, the Phoenix 7 so, and the Eagles 7. So, a 7-7 tie. We'll be right back after a word from our local sponsors. This is the Football Network. On Spike TV. So it was the end of the first quarter, beginning of the second, and uh, a surprise with Elon tying the game after Georgia Southern took the early lead. But we were talking about it during the break. Georgia Southern's made a lot of uh, penalties on uh, offense, and we've had uh, a little chippiness in that first quarter as well. As Williams, the quarterback, keeps it up the middle, charging. He's short of the first down by two or three yards. Uh, they, they probably had a good talking to on the sidelines from the coaching staff about, okay, let's start to focus better. Well, I'm sure they want, they want to focus a lot of better. And, and the game is, is a, a game of adjustments and then adjusting to the other team. Uh, we saw that uh, Georgia Southern starting off with an excellent fullback dive. Then we saw the fake dive in the pitch. And now we're seeing the fake dive with the quarterback, Chaz Williams, going up the middle. Austin into a pile. And it looks as though the, the Elon defense is very fired up. Well, they are, and, and they are, I think, for a lot of reasons. And just by being in the game at the end of the first quarter, I think they're very excited about their chances. So that short run was good enough for a first down. But still inside the 20-yard line, and the... Elon defense is looking to make a play. Davis in motion, takes the pitch. Got a block on that right side over there from number 20, Anderson, and there is another penalty on the play. As we take a look at the touchdowns in that first half. That was a great pitch and, and, and terrific effort getting the ball over the goal line before he goes out of bounds. That's Davis. And then Davis, great play there, and now uh, Mr. Palmer. Rashad Palmer had a 55-yard run to, to answer a little bit later in the quarter. But they pick up the laundry, and we'll get the explanation. On the offense, five-yard penalty. Wow. Repeat first down. Another penalty. Oh, that is the, that's already the seventh penalty on Georgia's. Quarter. That's unbelievable. Yeah, that, that's got to be very frustrating for the coaching staff. They worked so hard to get the team ready. First and 15 now. And a short handoff and the pile is moving on that right side. Let's check in with Dan Jansen on the sidelines. Dan. Well, guys, it's interesting there's so many penalties. I was talking to Coach Siwak before the game. I, I was suggesting, you know, what might be wrong with the six and four record. I said, are you guys injured or what's going on? He said, yeah, a little bit, but that's no excuse. He said, stupid penalties have cost us. It looks like it's happening here again today. Paul. 
Thank you, Dan. Well, 7-7 seven, seven tie. And perhaps a little overconfident on the part of Georgia Southern. We'll see if they wake up or if Elon can continue playing at a pretty high level. Williams will keep it and runs into Quinton Cox, number 33, the senior defensive end. Yeah, and, and just to pick up on what Dan was talking about, sometimes you have to take a penalty if a defensive back is getting beat, especially in college football on a long play. You take a penalty then as opposed to giving up the touchdown. But the penalties of, of omission, of, of jumping off sides, of missing the snap count, and especially today, hitting after the whistle, now those are dumb or stupid penalties. So third and five, and the pitch play. Anderson brought down in a pile, first down, and he has stopped just inside the 40-yard line. And there's another flag, Quinton Cox, number 33. Well, Big Albert Turner, number 73, as a lineman, really got downfield to lead that play. They're getting some great blocking up front by the Georgia Southern offensive line. Turn, Hames, Wayne, Cordy Collins, these guys are really doing the job. But the flag keeps hitting the field. We've had 11 penalties all told today between the two teams. And referee Lewis Foreman has gotten a lot of camera time. <laughs> if his family's wondering where he is, we have the tape to prove it. I, well, I tell you what, I haven't seen that signal in a while. <laughs> What's that, the two-hand push in the back sign? Uh, I, I guess I'm supposed to be the expert to know what that means. But that was an interesting sign. Let's see what he says. Helping the runner mm -hmm. on the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. The yardage on the play is still going to be enough for a first down. We used to do that all the time in the pros. I mean, John Riggins got half his yards with somebody pushing him. But I guess that time they were just a little too, uh, I, I don't know, I guess they got observed doing it. Yeah, too, too obvious. I mean, that's something that you, you see, it seems like it's a normal situation to be happening. I mean, when you were little playing uh, tackle football, that was the first thing you do is hand off the ball and then start pushing the ball carrier. Well, I, well that's the first time we've seen that call all year. That's the first time I've ever seen it. Well, I told you that the offensive line was downfield blocking. So maybe they were hitting the wrong guy. First and 10 at the 34-yard line. And Williams just barely gets that ball handed off to Jermaine Austin. And Austin out to the 40-yard line. Oh, guess what? Another penalty has been thrown in the pile after the play. So this could be a personal foul. It's short of the first down by about four yards. 7-7 tie here in the second quarter. And referee Lewis Foreman getting the explanation. After the play was over, personal foul. Coming to you defense. from Rhodes Stadium and Elon, North Carolina. It's Elon and Georgia Southern in a 7-7 tie. Georgia Southern uh, uh, decided to a favor here in this game, but 7-7, and those of you who were watching the Delaware UMass game in that triple overtime, I'm Paul Olden, along with Gene Fugit, former NFL great, and Dan Jansen on the sidelines. And we welcome you all to our game. Overcast, but uh, cool, but no rain. We had some rain earlier, and the Elan cheerleading crew, at least the future cheerleading crew, getting some work on the sidelines with the uh, regulars. Chad Mott is walking off of the field. He was the left guard who was shaken up on that last play. Well, it's been a lot of seesaw action here so far in the, in, the, in the first half today. Both teams like to run the ball a lot. They bunch it in and run it and like to fake it up the middle and go outside. Now, Georgia Southern has a great fullback in number six, Jermaine Austin, and he's the first person that Elon has to stop. Quarterback is Chaz Williams with Davis in motion, and the first man bounding off the pile was the fullback Austin but Davis had the ball and he takes it to the 40 yard line Davis on an eight yard touchdown run for Georgia Southern and then Rashad Palmer answered with a 55 yard run for Elon to tie the game a Georgia Southern offensive line is doing a great job coming off the ball and because Austin uh, uh, because uh, the, the running back is so short Jermaine the defense can't even see whether he has the ball or not Here's the pitch to Anderson at the 40, the 35, and tumbling out of bounds at the 30-yard line with a first down. Kevin Anderson, 5'9", 181, a sophomore. And he's been getting a lot of touches this afternoon. 
Well, this offense of Georgia Southern gives the defense so many different looks, and now we're starting to see it in full motion. Here, the quarterback takes the snap, pitches the ball after everybody else went one way, he pitches the ball the other way for good yardage, and Anderson gets the first down. Uh, Teddy Kraft, number 85, the leading receiver on this team, with 14 catches coming in, is into the game, but they keep it on the ground, and after a little bit of a hesitation, Austin surges forward for a gain of about four yards. Jermaine. There he is, folks. Number six, Jermaine Austin, leading rusher in the uh, Southern Conference, one of the top rushers in the country. And watch how he stops on a dime here. <laughs> Cuts in there three or four yards after that. At Great bounce. At number six, Calvin Sutton reaching for him, and you're not going to bring him down with an arm tackle, that's for sure. Second down and five from the 25-yard line in a 7-7 tie. Pitch goes to Davis right side. And Davis is strung out of bounds, close to the first down marker, however, as Anthony Harris was over there to try and uh, stop him before he got that first down. And I believe there's another flag on the play. And in fact, one of the uh, one of the players on Elon had to pull out a teammate before he got into a fight. Well, there was Kevin Davis going in motion. He's been a real weapon today, already having scored a touchdown for Georgia Southern. After the play. And another personal foul. That's what, the third or fourth personal foul now. Well, I guess Georgia I better Southern. start keeping count. Yeah. So that backs them up beyond the 30 yard line to the 33 yard line. Another personal foul on Georgia Southern. 7 7 tie with 10 and a half to go in the first half as Mike Seawalk is just uh, totally. Beside himself, trying to figure out where all these penalties, especially the personal foul penalties, are coming from. Yeah, he's got he's to be wondering. And, and, and again, it's not easy to be a coach sitting there just watching this. So first and ten from the 33-yard line, and the handoff spinning, making a pretty good effort spinning and keeping his legs going. Number six, Jermaine Austin. Austin's had a game of over 200 yards this year, 207 against Florida International, and last week, 136 yards. And he's playing with a bad knee. He had a little bit of a ligament tear a couple of weeks ago, but he has refused to give it up. A little bit of a ligament tear. Look, if he got a ligament torn, that hurts. And for him just to be playing on that shows how courageous he is. A high threshold for pain, apparently. 7-7 seven, seven tie, 10 minutes to go first half. Look at him go. Spinning for the first down and yards after that to the 13, Jermaine Austin. And I'm glad that everybody's seeing this because you have to wonder how a man running straight ahead can get so many yards. But now that you see it, you see that defense has to worry about the fake to him, has to worry about the quarterback running, has to worry about the guy in motion getting a pitch, and they also have to worry about a fake to, to the fullback and a pass. So all of that together is what makes that offense work. And here, he busts right through, makes a man miss, spins around, first down. Austin averaging 132 yards, has an opening up the middle, and is brought down inside the five-yard line. They wear you down, and they wear you down. Vincent Graves, number 42, made what appeared to be a touchdown-saving tackle. The free safety. And you can see the size of him right there. You can see on that angle that he's not the, the biggest man, but when he gets that ball, he's real big. Watch this. See how he got that shoulder down? Mm -hmm. Very tough to get under. We have an official's time for a measurement to see if it's going to be first and goal to go. And they're a little bit short by about a foot. I don't think they really care that they're short only a foot. Well, they've run now, Paul, for 170 yards a day on, on 27 carries, so they're really starting to get that ground game in gear. And that's where everything starts for the evil offense. Now they average 329 yards rushing per game. That's one of the best in the country, isn't it? Mm, yes. A little over 27 points per game. So second and short and pushing Austin back is the Elan defense. Wow, he Calvin, still wasn't down. Calvin Sutton, number six, was leading the way as, as number six, Jermaine Austin, kind of bounced off a lot of guys. Powerful as a bowling ball, like we said earlier. He is very tough to get under. 
and where would you want to mark this ball? Would you mark it there, or would you mark it there? Actually, or do you mark it there? He bounced off his own man, left tackle Albert Turner. He bounced off his left tackle. Uh, yeah, I've had a few backs uh, run up me as well. And, the, and some of your real good running backs, if you don't have a hole there for them, they'll come right over you. And that time, look at Jermaine. Very difficult to bring down. Look, he broke that tackle, but he got a good spot. Third down. Third and one. Williams on the keeper, nothing happening in the middle, but now he finds a slight opening as he surges forward. He got away from number 33, Quinton Cox, and then uh, looks as though it's gonna be a first and goal, but the officials again, I think will, nope, they are moving the chains. It is first and goal to go now. Good effort, second effort by Chaz Williams after it looked as though he might be stopped with that initial try. Jermaine Austin, 75 yards. Is that a 158-yard game, 140-yard game, 136, 160? Takes the ball, charges toward the goal line, short by inches. 7-7 seven, seven tie with eight minutes to go in the first half. He's trying to go in over his right side of 77, Paul Collins, 6'4", 287-pound tackle, and that's the guy he'd want to be behind. Right next to him is Reggie Cordy, 6'3", 290. So that right side is very big and very powerful, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him hit it again. It's almost impossible to stop a team like Georgia Southern with a guy like Jermaine Austin from this close. Second and goal to go from the one foot line, but Chaz Williams might keep it, and he does. Surges forward for the touchdown. For Williams, his seventh rushing touchdown of the season. I'm going to call that a rush, a foot. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, it was a rush. And you got to give a lot of credit to the Georgia Southern offense that time because despite the penalties, mm -hmm. despite the mistakes, they were able to keep the drive together and finally score. Here's another look at that quarterback sneak, and you can see everybody digging in there, but it was too close to stop. The point after try now from Sean Holland. And it's straight and true. So Georgia Southern has regained the lead. The score here at Elon is Georgia Southern 14, Elon 7. We'll be right back after a word from our local sponsors. This is the Football Network. Back with you here at Elon. And Elon now trailing 14 to 7. And we'll see if the Phoenix can rise to the occasion and try and tie the game here with 7.33 to go till halftime. Here comes the kick from Jonathan Dudley. And this is Dwayne Imes from the goal line on the near side. He's got the 20-yard line and pounded there. So first and 10 from the 20. Well, if you're into fantasy football, you've got to watch Fantasy Football 2003, Saturday mornings at 9 on Spike TV. Paul Crane, Jerry Glanville, and Danny Sheridan tell you who to pick, who to play, and who to park on the bench. Want to win? Then watch Fantasy Football 2003, Saturday mornings on Spike TV. Yeah, that show is a lot of fun. I was at the studio in uh, Baton Rouge this week while they were recording that. And, uh, there's some great people having a lot of fun down there. So you found out who they're parking <laughs> and who they're picking. 14-7, Elon trailing. Anthony Cruz, the young freshman quarterback, with the play pick and looks to pass. And he's got a man. Beautiful catch by Casey Hall. Only Casey's third catch of the season. But he caught it in stride. The red shirt freshman, one freshman to another freshman for a big gainer. Well, Cruz is almost a sophomore now. You know that great pundit that said the only good thing about freshmen is that they become sophomores. And after a season of futility, Cruz today is putting the ball right on the money to the surprise of many. A.K. Keys was the defender beaten on the play. So first and 10 from the 33-yard line. And now back on the ground with Palmer. And the tackle made by Victor Cabral. Let's take a look at the short run. Yes, yeah, a quarterback sneak. Everybody's getting low. But when you're that close, it's very difficult to stop a quarterback going over the top. No gain on that last play. In fact, a loss of a couple. So second down and a long 11. 
as Anthony Cruz, number seven, after that long pass, the lone setback is Palmer, number 23. And Palmer on the right side finds an opening inside the 30 to the 26-yard line. Still short of the first down. But he's got a lot of people blocking for him now. Yeah, that was really good blocking up front. That time with the single back, some people think the defense have an edge with a single back because you can see which way he's going right away. But that time, the uh, defense from Georgia Southern couldn't get there in time. And you can see that they're trying to tackle that ball. That was uh, James Young, number one, trying to rip that ball loose. Now, Casey Hall, who just caught the long pass, is at the top of your screen on third and three from the 26-yard line. Elon trailing 14 to seven. It's Palmer trying to make something after the initial contact was made by number 90, Victor Cabral, in the backfield. Palmer got away for a little bit more, but not much. So now, with five and a half remaining, they still need three yards on fourth down. And Derek Butler with four tackles today. And, and it's been very important uh, plucking up that middle. They're going to try for a field goal here. Number 39, William Rawls, will kick it. This will be about a 41-yard attempt. Good job to bring the ball down after the high snap, but it comes up short. Comes up short. So Rawls, who was just three of eight in field goal tries, misses that one. It remains 14-7 in favor of Georgia Southern. We're back with you here at Elon, 14-7. Georgia Southern is on top. And after the missed field goal try, Georgia Southern in white has the ball. First and 10. And another flag goes down before this play can get underway. We've had a ton of flags this afternoon. Georgia Southern already over 200 yards rushing here today. 32 snap. carries. False start on the offense. 203 yard yards. It remains first down. And it remains first down. So that's the ninth penalty of the day on Georgia Southern. Let's take a look at what Jermaine Austin number six can do. You see the great balance and the agility. You see how he pops through the hole, is able to get his shoulder down, and here's the touchdown. Quarterback Chaz Williams takes it in. And up the middle, this time Brandon Andrews, who only has 37 carries before that one coming into this game, averaging 5.7 yards a carry, though, so usually when he touches the ball, it uh, results in some nice positive yardage. This time, a gain of about three. Well, Andrews is, is the sophomore trying to get some carries for him. Having him and Jermaine Austin is, is, is having a nice pair, but only one can carry at a time. Now Austin was resting on that last play. He's back in the backfield now. The only one back there, and he takes the ball to the right side. Got away from one man and is tackled on the right side. He's able to get out of the grasp of Travis Wetzel, number 90. Football 101. Pure, unadulterated pigskin. DeMarco Thar, Kathleen Murphy scour the world of football to bring you unique stories and tell them in TFN style. From the Pee-wees to the pros, get the freshest taste of football possible on Football 101, Saturday mornings at 9.30 on Spike TV. Third and four now on the 31-yard line for Georgia Southern. Elon looks like he wants to try and blitz and come in there hard with everybody. And they do come in. And Travis Wetzel, number 90, gets to the quarterback, Chaz Williams. They were looking eager before the snap of the ball, and they got in there very well. Well, Eddie Bell, one of their senior leaders, number 26, was one of the first people to get in there and, and, and disrupt that play. There he is, and it was finished off by Travis Wetzel. Great play by both of those defenders. So Sean Holland will punt for only the 35th time this year. And the kick is away. T.J. Clegg has the ball, got away from one man, but into the grasp of another. Number 32, Terrence McBride, makes sure that he didn't get away. 2.53 remaining till halftime. 
14 to 7 in favor of Georgia Southern. We'll be right back after a word from our local sponsors. This is the Football Network. Back with you here at Elon, 14 to 7. Georgia Southern has the lead, and Elon has the ball as we get near halftime. And Cruz, the quarterback with the play fake, looks to put it in the air, and he is incomplete, intended for Zach DeBusk, number 99. Well, it was a good idea, and, and we can tell that the Phoenix are, are mixing up their offense a little bit today. Haven't lost confidence in the passing attack, even though they've had difficulty this year. That was a pass to the tight end, one of my favorite plays, but they couldn't hook it up that time. Cruz now three out of six passing 59 yards in the rushing yards, about what we expected. 2-10 for Georgia Southern. I don't think we expected 2-10 in the first half, do we? Well, they, that's a they, lot. They run the ball quite a bit, and they, they eat up a lot of yards. Yeah, they sure have today. Running play. This one going to Chad Nkang. He doesn't carry the ball that much. This is only for Nkang. Let's see, his uh, second carry of the day, in fact. Rashad Palmer has carried the ball 11 times for 70 yards. And Jermaine Austin, 17 carries for Georgia Southern for 80 yards. So third down and four yards to go now for Elon. Elon just two out of six on third down. Mike Seawalk, the head coach, barking out some instructions. His team has been penalized nine times here in the first half team for 86 yards, but they have the lead, but only by a touchdown. Well, they think that most of their losses this year came as a result of the team beating themselves as opposed to getting beat. With such a great tradition and going to the playoffs year after year after year, I know it's been disappointing for a lot of the players on the team, especially the seniors, having to end their career like that. But the coaches emphasize that we have a great tradition here and we're going to keep it going. Each side now with two timeouts remaining in the final two minutes and 35 seconds of the first half. It'll be third and four from the 39-yard line in Elon's own territory. Elon ranked 120th, 120th in Division I AA total offense. I mentioned they, they average a little less than uh, 10 points a game. In trouble. And Cruz cannot get rid of the ball before Eric Hadley, number 98, gets there. A big loss. And Georgia Southern, uh, I think, is interested in getting a timeout here. Yeah, they do indeed get the timeout call. Ball is back at the 24-yard line. Let's take another look at that play. Well, Cruz has had trouble with his pass protection this year, and, and, and this looks like a jailbreak. And I guess he could not get the ball away because he was trying to get outside the tackle. Then you can throw the ball out of bounds past the yard line of scrimmage and not be an intentional grounding. But he didn't even have time for that ball. As soon as he got the snap, they were all over him. And now with two minutes and 25 seconds left, Georgia Southern thinks they have a chance to score again. Robert Locke, who has had a big first half, number 95, kind of forced Cruz away from what he originally wanted to do. And then the finishing tackle as we take a look at East Tennessee State, a winner. The Citadel with a nice comeback for a win. And Appalachian State leading in the fourth quarter. Wofford now has come alive. The winner of the Southern Conference Championship in the uh, what they hope will be a nice finish up to this regular season before their automatic berth into the playoffs gets them underway in postseason. So fourth down, punting team on. And Georgia Southern waiting for the ball. Teddy Kraft looking for a nice return as Elon tries to mix up the blocking assignments. Ball is away as a low liner and Kraft with lots of time to return it. He's at the 40. A flag is down. A flag is down. Kraft across the 50 and inside the 40-yard line. But we'll find out about the penalty. Could be an illegal block back up field. Wouldn't be surprised. That would be the 10th penalty on Georgia Southern if it is on the Eagles. Well, the Eagles had it all set up that time. And it was all stopped by a hole. They had pressure on the punter. It was a poor punt. 
They were able to receive it with plenty of time, plenty of room, mm -hmm. block and set up. Ball's going to be on the other side of the 50, but all for naught. Holding on the, or on the receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First. Lewis Foreman, our referee today, has had plenty of camera time as we are now at the 209 mark of the first half in Georgia Southern with its 10th penalty, getting close to 100 yards worth of penalties. So 14 to 7 is the score. Georgia Southern on top of Elon with 209 to go to the half. Kind of a chilly day, I should say so, here at Elon, North Carolina. Temperature in the 40s. So first and 10. Georgia Southern with 2.09 remaining in the first half. And Chaz Williams with a nice toss brought down beautifully by Terry Kraft. Teddy Kraft, I should say. Terry Kraft is a major league umpire. <laughs> Teddy Kraft reached for that one and brought it down. Well, the call is safe on that. That was a great catch. And he threw it through two, in a through two defenders were right there in front. I thought that ball could have gotten picked off, but a good throw, good catch. And the officials are going to take a measurement. I was thinking about Jack McKeon, who is going to be honored here at halftime, the manager of the Florida Marlins. Baseball is on my mind as uh, Jack McKeon, the National League Manager of the Year. And, of course, uh, we'll get his World Series ring sometime early next year. And an Elon graduate and an Elon resident. And he has been uh, making the rounds in the last few days. It's going to be his day next Saturday here in town. Jack McKeon Day on the 22nd of November. We hope to have a few words with him at halftime after he is honored on the field. So stay tuned for that. Short of the first down by about a couple of inches with 1.56 remaining in the first half. Austin the running back. Williams might keep it himself here. Number 10, the quarterback. Oh. His pass incomplete to the near side intended for P.J. Cantrell. I'm going to check out TFN's website, footballnetwork.com. We'll have in-depth information on your favorite teams, including a special section for you 1AA fanatics. We'll also complement our fantasy football programming with even more content and analysis. Exercise your football gland online at footballnetwork.com. Third down and inches to go. And now Williams decides to keep it as he surges forward into the pile and looks as though he has that first down. So Elon, with the 55-yard run by Rashad Palmer, it's only score. Well, they probably will go into the locker room happy to be this close. Williams to throw. He can't find anyone, and so he'll run at the 40, across the 45, and brought down in the open field at the 47-yard line. Eddie Bell makes the stop, number 26. Play action, he was trying to look downfield, trying to get the first down, and he decides to pull the ball down and tries to run for a first down, but guess who's coming up to make the tackle? <laughs> I'm sure seen a lot of crews today. One minute to go in the first half. Williams right side, and it is intercepted. It is intercepted on a deflection by Anthony Harris. It looked as though Eric Irby, number 84, was the intended receiver. Well, I told you two play plays ago that the ball went through a couple of defenders. And that time, he hit his man only to have the ball bounce out of his chest into the defender. Uh, Irby had it for a second, and Harris was there to catch it out of the air. Fine play with 52 seconds to go in the first half. So again, Elon feeling that, hey, we're only down by seven. We're going to try and take it into the locker room down by seven. And another example of Georgia Southern beating themselves. Absolutely. First and 10 from the 31-yard line. We'll see if they play it conservatively. As Palmer, the running back, pounds straight ahead and picks up three yards. I think Mike Seawalk of Georgia Southerns is hoping that his team doesn't commit any kind of penalties, any kind of personal fouls. They, only have, uh, they already have four of those personal fouls here in the first half and get into the locker room 
unscathed any further with 30 seconds to go. So this could be the final play of the first half on second down and seven. And a running effort for Nkang, and Nkang is stopped. And that'll be the final play as the clock now is inside 10 seconds. And so it's halftime here at Elon. And the Phoenix trying to snap a seven game losing streak only down by seven here at the half. 14 to seven, Georgia Southern on top. On a chilly afternoon here in Elon, North Carolina. Let's go downstairs now to Dan Jansen on the sidelines, Dan. All right, guys, here with uh, so Georgia Southern coach Seawalk. Um, your feelings on the first half? Oh, awful sloppy right out there. I never saw so many flags, and I'm sure that we're, we're, some of them are ours. I'm sure that, that we also get there's some situation we need to take care of. And that's the ball right there, that last ball. we got a chance of moving the football. We're doing some good things. we got to take care of better care of the football. And I really think our defense needs to step it up and shut this thing out. So. All right, great. Thanks a lot. Good luck in the second half. Bob Beckham. So from Road Stadium here in Elon, it's 14 to 7. Georgia Southern on top. We'll be right back after these messages from your local sponsors. This is the Football Network. Back with you here at Elon, 14 to 7 as the teams come back onto the field. That's the Elon Phoenix you see trotting through the tunnel. And let's go back down on the field. LC Graves, the coach of Elon, is with Dan Jansen. Well, thanks, Paul. Coach, uh, a lot of rushing yardage against you in the first half. You think you stopped that? You got a good shot here. Well, we need to do that. Obviously, they get the ball. I'm sure they'll take the ball at the uh, start of the second half, so we're going to have to uh, – we made some adjustments. We got to do some good things and stop them from rushing the football. You know, defensively, did cause two turnovers in the first half. That was good, but got to do a better job out there on the perimeter. But certainly still in the game, just a touchdown. Absolutely. Back. You know, we just need to make a couple big plays ourselves and stop their big plays, and we'll be in great shape. All right, thanks a lot. Good luck. Paul, back upstairs. Thank you, gentlemen. It's been such a struggle this year for Elon to be in games going into the third quarter, but that's the case today, down only 14-7 to seven as we take a look at some of the first-half highlights. And Georgia Southern got on the board first with Kevin Davis, who was uh, – getting the ball quite a bit in that first half. Uh, great pitch, great effort getting into the end zone, reaching over the line before he got out of bounds. Here's Rashad Palmer ripping off a 55-yard touchdown run that tied up the score early in the uh, first half. And then Chaz Williams with the short dive here to make it 14-7, to Georgia Southern. And Georgia Southern had to... Uh, Kind of get out of its own way there, Gene, with those 10 penalties. Brought to you by Food Lion. Yeah, penalties were really big. Uh, 10 for 123 yards. And that's where we have to wonder where Georgia Southern's focus was. They're so used to going to the playoffs. Now this is their last game. And for many of the center seniors on the team, it's a bitter pull. Pill. But Elon on the other side, only four penalties and a chance to save their whole season by winning this game today as a launching pad for next year. So only down by a touchdown. They got a great shot, even though they've given up 222 yards in the first half. Elon trying to snap a seven-game losing streak. Well, this week's TIAA Crev Student Athlete of the Week is Elon's Jared Rudolph. Jared is a member of the soccer team. He has a 3.23 grade point average in business administration and is from Westerville, Ohio. For more information on the TIAA Crev Academic Awards program, go to www.soconsports.com. Congratulations to Jared. Well, the execution of the two quarterbacks is going to be the key for uh, this second half coming up. We've seen a, a great job by both. Uh, we had some uh, uh, criticism, I guess, of the freshman quarterback there on your left who's thrown a lot of interceptions, but he's made a lot of great decisions today for Elon. Now, on the, on the other side of your screen, you see the quarterback for Georgia Southern, and he's mostly been handing off to his running backs as well as faking and running up the field. And Chaz Williams has also scored one touchdown. But I think the real interesting thing is that Elon has not given up on their offense, and they're going to be coming out trying to score and win this game. If you missed TFN Fantasy Football 203 on Spy TV, don't worry. Visit fantasysports.yahoo.com for Fantasy Football 203 as streaming video will be there, available to you. Paul Crane, Jerry Glanville, and Danny Sheridan tell you who to pick, who to park on the bench, who to play as well. That's fantasysports.yahoo.com. Yahoo.com, your online home for Fantasy Football 2003. 
So after deferring the opening kickoff as Georgia Southern had won the coin toss, they will start on offense here in the second half. Up to the 30-yard line. Now Barr bounces outside and picks up even more yardage as he turns the corner. So it looked as though he was going to be shut down in the middle, but then Lewis Barr found a way to pick up another 20 yards. Well, getting a good start is, is important for both teams here in the second half. And here on this return, you can see that the kick was rather short. And look at that read. He goes right up into the pile and then uses his speed to get outside. So first and 10, ball is placed at the 48-yard line. This is Williams on the keeper after the fake. Jermaine Austin, number six, carried out the fake well into the secondary. And the quarterback, Chas Williams, on the keeper. Williams in that first half, in terms of running the football, picked up 31 yards on nine carries. Paul Olden, Gene Fugit, and Dan Jansen with you. The lights taking full effect here at Rhodes Stadium here in Elon, North Carolina on a chilly night. Pitch goes to Anderson left side, has the first down, brought down inside the 40-yard line. Dwayne Imes, among others, making the stop. So first and 10. Georgia Southern uh, starting their second half much like the first half with their balanced wing attack. This time the wing is in motion, and he goes from the right side to the left side, takes the pitch, and picks up first down yardage. A lot of pressure on that Elon defense. That put Kevin Anderson over 70 yards rushing as we take a look at some of the scores. On first and 10 from the 38-yard line. And a running play up the middle, Jermaine Austin. Austin in that first half gained 80 yards on 17 carries. And they kind of distributed the ball around on the ground with the, the nine rushes for Williams, four for Kevin Davis, and Davis scored a touchdown, five touches for Kevin Anderson. So well, it, wasn't the always, it wasn't always Austin. No, that's the beauty of the Georgia Southern offense, and the problem for the Elon Phoenix defense is who do you try to stop? You can't stop them all, but they better stop Austin. This is Davis, and Davis picking up nice yardage inside the 20. And that time they were ready to stop Austin as they collapsed on the fullback, only to find that it was a fake with the ball being pitched out to Davis, who gets good yardage coming around the right side. So here in the early stages of the third quarter, Georgia Southern on a uh, what seems like a hurry-up drive down the field. Well, I got to think they're going to be a lot more focused, and maybe some of the seniors, the seniors are going to be leaving. But I'm sure the coach reminded those other guys they're going to be back here next year. So let's get started on that now. Williams keeps it himself and picks up a couple of yards as he spins into the middle and is brought down by Calvin Sutton, number six. There is a player shaken up for Elon, and the officials are going to stop play. It's the nose tackle Emerson Plasikas, number 73, who is having trouble getting to his feet. Now he's helped up. Yeah, he had some trouble earlier in the game, came out, got his ankle taped, and tried to go back yeah. in there and do it again. But you can see that right ankle is still giving him problems. But uh, he wanted to be in the game. And you got to give him a lot of credit for trying. So the seek is to the sidelines. Second down and eight from the 14-yard line for Georgia Southern. Trying to improve on a 14-7 lead with 12.46 to go in the third quarter. Quarterback Chaz Williams under center. His running back is number six, Jermaine Austin. And Austin with the ball. Up the middle he goes and is pounded right at the five-yard line. Close to uh, getting away from Anthony Harris for a touchdown, but Harris found a way to bring him down. And that was a great block that time by 71 Chad Mods playing in, the, in at the guard position. Austin gets in there so quickly. Watch how fast he hits the hole. And he's through it before the defense even knew. Saving tackle that time. Anthony Harris, number eight, making a lot of tackles today. First and goal to go from the five. Elon on defense trying to figure out which hole to try and cover up, and they come hard at the quarterback. Williams got away for a moment. He's forced back inside the 10 and goes into a slide at the 10-yard line. Boy, Elon timed their move to charge in just as that snap was being made and avoided the penalty. 
Well, I tell you, when you got people like Bell hustling, watch him coming in. He just misses the quarterback and chasing from the backside. Look at him, never giving up, coming in on the play. I tell you, George Allen used to always say, don't be too smart. They're running the ball, running the ball, coming up the middle, pitching. And all of a sudden, they run a quarterback sweep for a loss. So I don't know where that play came from. They're but back, uh, <laughs> they're back to the nine now, second and goal to go from the nine. Williams keeps it, now tosses it to Davis. And he's hit just inside the 10-yard line. Gang tackling effort made by Elon's defense, led by number 50, Mark Hatch, who was the second leading sacker on the team with four. Here's, here it comes right at you with the pitch to Davis, who had scored on a play very similar. But Elon ready this time, and, and that's a good example of gang tackling. Looks like they had half the team in on that tackle. Now here's a big play at third down. Third and goal to go from the seven. Elon trying to come up big defensively. Up the middle, fighting close to the goal line, but short is Jermaine Austin, number six. So now they have to make a decision. Is fourth down, will they kick or will they go for it? Tough kick, that close on the right hash mark. A severe angle for a right-footed sidewinder. Now, P.J. Cantrell, number 19, comes in with the play. They gotta go for it on fourth down. Last time they were that close, they scored on a quarterback sneak. More than one, and the quarterback, Chaz Williams, with seven touchdowns this season. He keeps it, turns inside, and scores. So Chaz Williams, with his eighth touchdown rushing this season. He has thrown only one touchdown pass, but he has just one interception as well, so he's taking care of the ball, and when he gets close to the goal line, he likes to call his own number. And why not? It's very effective, this time with two lead blockers, and he had a choice of holes to choose, and he gets in there for the touchdown. That was a much different offense than we saw in the first half from the Eagles of Georgia Southern. They were really inspired on that drive. Sean Holland for the PAT, and it's good. Kind of got used to seeing all the yellow flags on the field, but none on this drive. So now it's 21 to seven, Georgia Southern on top. We'll be right back on the Football Network. Elon trying to come back. Back with you as Elon trails now, 21 to seven. As the kickoff heading down to number two, Dwayne Imes, he rips across the 20, stays on his feet, and now there are those flags we're used to seeing in the first half, and there is another flag there added at the end, so we could have uh, penalties on both sides here. We had to several personal foul penalties on the Georgia Southern in the first half. So Georgia Southern had 10 penalties for 123 yards in that first half, four for 52 yards for Elon. The referee today is Lewis Foreman, and his crew have been uh, yanking those flags and throwing them all over the field, up and down, from goal line to goal line. As Mike Seawalk is uh, trying to plead his case, it could be against his team, but he, he might be saying, hey, both sides were guilty. Well, they did such a good job after having so many problems in the first half. Looked like they came out in the second half with those problems behind, but maybe not. It's going to go against Elon. Well, if you're a fan of football, you can't afford to miss the Division I AA All-Star Classic. The game will showcase 100 of college football's best players and will be shown live December 30th on the Football Network from Lockhart Stadium in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The Division I AA All-Star Classic presented by American Airlines. For ticket information, go to footballnetwork.com. Both on a receiving team. Holding on the run back, that penalty will be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. After the play was over, personal foul on the receiving team. That penalty will be half the distance to the goal. First down. Well, now, Al Seagraves is saying, well, you know, we can't afford to make the kind of mistakes that uh, Georgia Southern made in the first half and think we can get away with it. It's a too young of a team, inexperienced, and a team that doesn't score a lot of points to begin with. Yeah, I had a play like that one time when I was playing for the Cowboys where a guy was holding me. I got called for holding, and then after the play, I kicked him. And then I got 15 yards. So I, I can understand. You get a little frustrated sometimes, and it's the last game of the year, and maybe this is the last chance to get those licks in. 
Anthony Cruz coming out here in the third quarter at quarterback. Elon has scored only 10 points in the third quarter all season long while giving up 74 points coming into this game. And of course, they've given up a touchdown a moment ago as this play will move it to second down at about the seven yard line, a short gain up the middle on that run. Looked like a problem with the exchange that time. Take another look at the touchdown. Second today for Chaz Williams, the quarterback. Yeah, Chaz calls his own number, comes around with that lead, two lead blockers, kind of tough to stop on that goal line. Quarterback on the roll. Gives him a 21 to seven lead here in the third quarter. This is second and 11 from the seven yard line for Elon. Cruz with a, an aired up ball and incomplete falling short of the intended target. That was C.W. Singletary, who has uh, picked up some time at quarterback himself this season. And that was dangerously lofted up there, wasn't it? No, actually, uh, sometimes you get a lot of good plays on a ball that can be underthrown. When you got a guy one-on-one -on -one downfield, some quarterbacks are taught if you can't throw it all away, just put some air under it. If you have confidence in the receiver who can either come back and catch it or be a defensive back and knock it down. That time, Singletary tried to come back and catch it, but he made the read too late. Casey Hall comes in, number 19. Hall, in the first half, caught a long pass for 47 yards. That was his only reception. Cruz in the first half only completed three passes out of six tries. And there's a short running play and stop at about the five-yard line. Number 98, Eric Hadley. And number 90, Victor Cabral. Making the stop, so three and out. So do you put the pressure on the putter here this close to the goal line? Absolutely. This is where you go for the juggler. This is when you try to take complete control of the game. Teddy Kraft awaiting the punt, and it's just gotten away. Diving in there was Kevin Anderson. He nearly blocked it. Kraft with the ball, broke a tackle, and is tackled at the 40-yard line. Stop made by Anthony Harris. We'll be right back after working with your local sponsors with the score 21 to 7 in favor of Georgia Southern. This is the Football Network. Up and appear to be stunned a little bit there at the end. Yeah, Austin's in. limping also. You can see him in the middle of your screen uh, limping off towards the top of the field. And I think that's the first time, Paul, today we saw him on a sweep. He's been so effective running in between the guards. Not even in between the tackles. I'm saying in between the guards. That he runs up the middle for a large percentage of his yards. That time, a little different look on a sweep. So number 34, Brandon Andrews, who carried the ball once in the first half, is in the backfield. And they'll check on Jermaine Austin right now on the sidelines. Anderson in motion. And up the middle with the big gainer is Andrews. Still going as the tackle is made. The ball trying to be uh, pulled out by Anthony Harris. But Brandon Andrews with the burst up the middle. Watch him explode through that hole. Here he goes. He goes up the middle and then turns it on. And you can't have a run like that without great blocking. This time, watch number 73, Turner, get his man turned, and he finishes him off. Great play, big guy. So the officials are now watching as number 34, Andrews, who just carried the ball, has to be helped off the field. Gets a little assist as he... He's probably tired. Shaking, yeah. <laughs> shaking up there at the end, and that spilled hard. So first down, 10 yards to go. And you can see that Elon's defense is starting to wear down now. Actually, the ball now inside the 10, so it's first and goal. Fake by Williams, the quarterback, who has scored twice today. And he's brought down at about the seven-yard line. So you figure you get this close to the goal line, and Chaz Williams... Will have his uh, number called perhaps again by the coaching staff. Oh, you don't think he makes that call? You know, I was thinking about that when I said that earlier. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Oh, boy, when we got inside the 20, I sure wished I could call plays because <laughs> I know what play I would call to me every time. I thought I could score every time inside the 20, and I'm sure a lot of players feel that way. All right, back in the game is Jermaine Austin. So he was shaken up for just a play. Pitch goes to Anderson left side at the, ten, at the five and into the end zone for the score. 
A flag is down. It looked as though Jermaine Austin moved before the snap, the running back. Good call, Coach. That's exactly what it looked like. And another man down. And that's Anderson who just carried the ball. It's going to go against Georgia Southern. And Anderson is shaken up as the apparent touchdown is nullified by the penalty. And Mike Seawalk, again, is yelling at the officials, or maybe he's yelling at his team saying, let's not start making those mistakes we made in the first half. Let's get the word now from Lewis Foreman. Shot block on the offense. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. That stings the big one, 15 yards. Yeah, those are borderline calls sometimes because uh, there are certain areas in the field when you cannot block below the waist. And that time, uh, Georgia Southern was detected for doing so. But sometimes you can move two more steps, and it's okay. So the penalties today have cost Georgia Southern a whopping 179 yards. Well, that's their that's record. That's their record. So today, they're getting close, 138. Yeah, too close as far as Mike Seawalk is concerned. And now Kevin Anderson, who's been wow. a key member of the offense today, is helped off the field. Ball back to the 21-yard line. East Tennessee State, a big winner today. Going out in style. The Citadel and a close win at VMI and Appalachian State, a winner today. Wofford holding on to its short lead there in the third quarter. The postseason berth for Wofford already assured with the conference championship. Yeah, and this conference has sent two and sometimes three members to the tournament in the past, so Appalachian's still hoping. So second and goal to go from the 21-yard line. Williams with the pitch. It's a bad one, and short hopped and saved by Davis. The uh, pitch went behind him, and Davis had to slide to the turf to make sure it didn't get away. He had to get that short hop in. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Jack McKeon would have loved it. The short of the standings and the SoCon. Wofford with a wonderful year at 9-1 and one overall, and Appalachian State hoping for the postseason as well. And then, that's a strong 6-2 because mm -hmm. the two games they lost outside of Crawford were the pretty good teams. And Elon there at the bottom at 2-9 and nine, trying to snap a seven-game losing streak today, but trail 21-7. to seven. Georgia Southern. Williams looking to pass. They put something on this one, and it is caught, and into the end zone for the touchdown is Terry Kraft. Wow. Teddy Kraft. So Teddy brings it in. That's only his second touchdown reception of the season. But he's been waiting for that play to be called all day because all day that middle was open, and there he is making a great catch. He had to fight that time with uh, Stephen McCoy, but he takes the ball away from him and goes in for the touchdown. You know what? They brought it back. A penalty on Georgia Southern. No touchdown. On the offense, five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. Can you believe that? An illegal no. shift. Another, uh, another penalty. They're getting closer and closer to their team record. Wow. Yeah. Th oh, man. They looked so good on that last drive that led to the touchdown. The very quarter, first the drive coming out. They were so focused, so ready. Yeah. They go right down the field and score. Looking like they're going to do it again to put the game, uh, not out of reach, but, but certainly in control. And now to be sent back again. So now it's third and goal to go from the 27-yard line. They've got to be careful not to take themselves out of field goal range. And now there's movement before the snap. Uh -oh. And Elon is pointing at Georgia Southern as uh, the guilty party. No, I can't no, say it ain't so. Prior to snap, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Good call again. It's almost comical now that they, these penalties are piling up like this on Georgia Southern. And it's still a goal-to-go -go situation. Georgia Southern's on the verge of having more penalty yards than total offense for Elon. Now the ball back now to the 32. So it is third down and goal to go from the 32. And Williams wants to try and get it on the ground and he's not gonna get very far. So Elon's defense is fired up with Derek Collins, number 31, the linebacker out of Staley, North Carolina, making and a tackle. he's a senior, and that's a tackle he's going to remember for a long time because big third down. Got in there to make the play. Those seniors, this is really a big game for all seniors today, and seniors all across America will be finishing their college careers. 
So now Sean Holland is going to come on and try a field goal. Sean, the player of the week in SoCon last week. Oh, he's going to punt. Looks like a punt, Paul. Yeah, he's going to punt instead. He had five field goals last week, but he'll punt the ball away. T.J. Clegg is standing inside the 10-yard line. And will probably let it go. Punt hung up there. And it is batted and kept out of the end zone inside the five-yard line. So a great job there done by Georgia Southern to prevent the touchback. And force Elon to start deep in its own territory. 21 to 7, Georgia Southern on top here in the third quarter. Spike TV presents your VHS. Call 1-800-206-7171 today. So Georgia Southern has a touchdown pass nullified because of still another penalty. And so Elon has the ball deep in its own territory on the four, first and ten. And then he cruises the quarterback under center. Play fake and looks to throw it. Oh, just out of the reach of his man, the intended receiver on the near side. That's Dan Brooks, a freshman. Well, Brooks was open on that play, and he just needed to put just a little more air under the ball to give Brooks the opportunity to run under it and catch it. So now you can catch TFN's radio focus, news features, interviews, analysis, but also look for the football program being built from the ground up. Football Network will take you to Conway, South Carolina. We'll be there next week. Found a 2003 birth of a tradition where we'll chronicle the very first season of Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. If you want an insider's view of the glamour, passion, and heartache, tune in to Football Network every Friday and check your local listings. So second down, running play to the near side and banging out, still looking for running room on the near side near the 10-yard line. It appeared to be Palmer running the ball. So third down coming up. So they do have a little bit of room to work now away from uh, being so close to the goal line, but a big third down call. Well, they want to get the ball out past the 20. That's always a, a coach's uh, uh, hope to get past the 20 so that you can kick up to the 50. They line two out of eight on third down in the game. Play fake. And a little lob pass incomplete. Intended for Zach DeBusk. So now, once again, in that situation, uh, you figure that Georgia Southern will apply the pressure on the last punt from this part of the field. Uh, number 20, Kevin Anderson, almost got in there for the block. He barely missed it. Standing deep is number two, Lewis Barr. And the punt is blocked this time through the end zone for a safety. So the block is made good. They came close the last time, and they make good on the block this time. Deshaun, uh, rather, John Mooring is getting the high fives and the celebration there after the block. They couldn't get the putt away. Boy, that was a great, great play. You see, Mooring took the ball right off the punter's foot and knocks it out for a safety. Oh. Mooring's has had a great day today, one of the leading defensive players, one of the leading tacklers, and now blocks a punt. Well, Mooring got into trouble yesterday. He did not make the start today for disciplinary reasons at linebacker, but then obviously now he has gotten back into the good graces of the coaching staff, and blocking a punt helps. So we'll have a free kick coming up in a, a moment. The score now is 23-7 to in favor of Georgia Southern. And he's just a freshman, so a lot of times freshmen end up being late at meetings mm -hmm. and don't know everything that's going on, but when this... Uh, game started he knew what to do and that's a great job again he's being congratulated there on the sideline by his teammates number 47 John Mooring blocking that punt well that really puts Elon's back up against the wall now Paul with a score of 23 to 7 now they're three scores away and they have to uh, kick the ball away back to Georgia Southern on the free kick here after the safety yeah, that's one of the unusual plays in football. It's the only time when you score and get the ball immediately back is when your defense scores a safety. And then the offense, since you forced them all the way down to the end of the field, 
uh, the offense doesn't have any more plays, and they're forced to punt or kick off to the other team. And this is Anthony Taraski who had his punt blocked for the safety. Now will kick it away from about the 25-yard line. Deep to receive, number two to Lewis Barr. He doesn't take the yardage to run up to it and kick it. Grabbed instead by number 13, A.J. Bryant. And Bryant is upended at midfield. Nice open field tackle by number 27, T.J. Clegg. Well, Bryant hijacked that one. I mean, I don't think he was supposed <laughs> to be uh, uh, bringing the ball back, but he wanted to have a chance to return, and he made a fine one. That Georgia Southern has gotten used to winning. Yeah, they lead the nation in wins in the last five years with uh, a total of 63. And we talked about that earlier. They're so used to having that last game be a tune-up for the playoffs, but this will be their last game of the season this year. So first and 10 now for Georgia Southern at the 50-yard line. Blake Lock waiting 10 seconds, so that's now why play is being stopped here. Timeout called by Elon as their first timeout of the second half. So Elon takes a timeout as Al Graves talking to his coaching staff upstairs, trailing 23 to seven with 3.58 to go in the third quarter. Catch TFN Radio's Football Focus. News, features, interviews, analysis. If it's football, it's on TFN's Football Focus on the Sports Byline Radio Network. Hosted by John Chalesnik. Monday afternoons at 4.10, Thursday mornings at 6.10, and Sunday evenings at 7.10. Check those local listings. So the Elon cheer crew and the band still with plenty of spirit, plenty of fight. And the question is now, you mentioned a few moments ago that Elon's defense might be getting a little tired. They've been on the field for quite a bit now after that safety. Yes, they have, and, and that might have been one of the reasons why they called the timeout, because I couldn't tell whether they had 11 men on the field. But on this drive, I would expect to see a lot of what we've seen so far from Georgia Southern, which is a heavy dose of Jermaine Austin, number six, the single back in that double wing offense. About 305 net rushing yards for Georgia Southern to this point. 3.58 to go, third quarter, 23 to seven. The Eagles are on top. And they, with Chaz Williams keeping it himself after the fake, picks up a couple of yards. Let's check in with Dan Jansen down on the sidelines. Dan? Well, Paul, you mentioned the rushing 307 yards to this point. Not unusual for this team at Georgia Southern. They've got over 400 or more yards, 17 in the last 25 games, 500 or more, 17 times since 2000. And get this, three times over 600 yards rushing. So this is not unusual. Paul? Thank you, Dan, with the average 329 yards on the ground per game. And here is the running play up the middle. And look at those legs churn for that extra yard or two. Jermaine Austin up the middle. And we talked about him in our opening remarks. And not surprised to see him doing the job tonight. Look at his body lean as he goes through the hole. It's very hard for someone to get under him and bring him down. That's why he's being held by the waist and getting dragged down because it's very hard to meet him head on and get underneath to make a clean tackle. Attack on uh, another four or five yards. He now has 105 yards unofficially on 22 carries. Make it 23rd carry here as he rips up the middle. And tackled hard inside by number three, Stephen McCoy. McCoy had a few words of maybe uh, saying, hey, good effort to Austin as McCoy made the stop. But he, he got his head down and made sure he, he met the center of gravity, which is pretty low for Austin to begin with. Well, there's Austin running off the field, but, but you got to get low. I mean, in the weight room, he bench presses 365 pounds. Brandon Andrews is now the running back, and he has the ball. Oh, no, I take that back. Not Andrews, but Darius Smiley with the ball. They have a cast of thousands in that offense. I mean, I'm telling you, they got so many talented players. And this is an offense that's really suited for having a number of good, fundamentally sound football players. And they really dominate. Look at the first down domination. 24 first downs for Georgia Southern to six for Elon. Elon scored on a 55-yard run back in the second 
Uh, actually, in the first in the first quarter, they scored that touchdown. The fake, and Williams is brought down around the ankles at the 25-yard line. So Chaz Williams on the short run. There's a flag on the field. Have we heard me say that tonight? <laughs> and it is against... A flag, you say? Against Georgia Southern. That will be the 14th penalty against Georgia Southern. I got to think we're going for the record here. We got to be getting close. How many yards is this one? Illegal shift. Two men in motion on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. So that backs them up a little bit more. They have to get inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line for a first down. And the snap here will come from the 33. Elon with a hard charge. McMillan to the left side. He's fresh into the game and stopped at the 30-yard line. So we're seeing some new names, Smiley and McMillan, getting a chance to carry the football. Now we talked about the record, uh, the penalties for Georgia Southern. 179 yards is the record for that team. So yeah. they're 26 yards away from the record. That's uh, two 15-yard penalties, and they got it. <laughs> and they got a whole quarter to go, folks. Yeah, we're just inside a minute now, shortly, for the end of the third quarter. Second down and 12, and Williams puts the ball down the middle, and it is a catch and a stop, a tackle made at the one-foot line as Teddy Kraft brings it in. Boy, I'd love to be a receiver on this team, Paul, because you get a chance to run to the middle with no safety. You got to bring those safeties up with this running attack, and when they come up with a face, it leaves the middle open. Watch. No one in the middle. He was trying to get back there. You saw that time that uh, Anthony Harris was trying to get back. He jumped and just missed tipping it. Excellent throw, excellent catch. Uh, Kraft had a touchdown a few minutes ago, nullified because of a penalty, and here is the running play to Jermaine Austin. He does not get in, though, as he tried to vault over the middle. <laughs> now, how is he going to vault over the middle? <laughs> I don't Look know. Look how short he is. I mean, come on. He wasn't. Was he, oh, man. He needs if, a springboard. If he, if he goes over the top, I'm going to go crazy. He, he needed a launching pad yeah, to get over that go. group. That's right. So second and goal to go. But he's tough. He really is. He's had a great day today. As the third quarter comes to an end in uh, six seconds. So no more play here in the third quarter of play. End of three. It is 23-7. Georgia Southern on top of Milan. Back after work with your local sponsors. This is the Football Network. On Georgia Southern. As we return live here to Rhodes Stadium with a 23-7 lead. And uh, the old knock it on the door inches away from another touchdown as Mike Seawalk is happy his team has made some adjustments here in the second half. Despite 14 penalties for 153 yards, they are about to score again if they can control it here. And the quarterback, Williams, surges ahead, and he is over for the touchdown. Chaz Williams' third touchdown of the game. Well, did he call his own number, or was that called from the sideline? We don't know, but it's been working. And uh, we've seen him do that earlier today. And now you can see the Elon sideline not very happy about it. A lot of emotion on the field today. We got seniors, uh, most of them uh, probably playing their last game in organized football. And they've been playing football since many of them were eight or seven years old. Point after now from Sean Holland, the attempt. And he bangs it through. So 14.57 to go in the game. And Georgia Southern has improved its lead to 30-7. To the score at halftime was 14-7. to And we can take a look at some of the numbers. 330 rushing yards to only 93. And without a doubt, uh, Georgia Southern, one of the leading rushing offenses in the country. You can see why after three quarters, 330 yards. Like I said earlier, very similar to that Navy offense where uh, 
the coach that used to coach at uh, Georgia Southern is now coaching Navy, and he's doing such a great job there. But he left a great game plan behind the Georgia Southern, and you can see they continue to run the ball, passing only 38 yards, and they've had twice as many offensive plays, 64 to 31. Well, if you're a college football fan, you can't afford to miss TFN's rivalry series, the legendary matchups between Georgia and Florida. We saw that one last week. Michigan and Ohio State will be available this fall on VHS and DVD. For information on ordering, go to footballnetwork.com. So 30 to 7. Elon uh, try to avoid its eighth consecutive loss, but uh, they have quite the challenge. And again, this was an Elon team with a lot of young players. They don't score very often, averaging a little less than 10 points per game. Dwayne Imiz is deep to receive the kick coming up as Chaz Williams, the quarterback, looks uh, pretty relaxed with his three touchdowns today for Georgia Southern. Dudley to kick it off. Also back there, number 27, T.J. Clegg. But this is Imiz, and he's down. Stopped immediately by Tim Gersitz. Wow, look at that number. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? <laughs> I'll say 72 and 1 when leading after three quarters, going back to 1997. We talked about tradition. We talked about Georgia Southern Eagles playing for tradition. And we also talked about Elon playing for pride. And they can still do that here in the fourth quarter. Elon's had a tough day on third down, just two out of nine. Georgia Southern, conversely, five of eight on third down. And the freshman quarterback, Anthony Cruz, out of the gun, forced to put the ball in the air. And his first pass is complete with this new set of downs. At the 20-yard line, the ball brought in by number 29, Andrew Oak, out of Asheville, North Carolina. Look at that tradition for Georgia Southern. They're used to being uh, successful. Yeah, a lot of people didn't understand uh, what they were doing down there in, in Statesboro, Georgia, but they were winning national titles, six national titles, six straight SOCON titles, and they'll be back again next year competing for yet another title. Second down and four now from the 22-yard line. Nice zip on that pass, and it's complete. And it looks as though it's enough for the first down as... Brian Simmer out of Ohio. Mayfield makes the reception. Pitch and catch, running down, turning a little hook, quarterback hitting them. I'm telling you, they've seen Cruz all season as a freshman looking like a, a deer caught in the headlights earlier in the year, making bad decisions, throwing numbers of interceptions. But not today. He's been very solid today. So first and 10 from the 27. Back under center with the play fake, and he slips and falls at the 20-yard line. He was trying to plant and look upfield to throw, but his footing uh, gave way. Yeah, a little frustrating there. He came back, good play action, hoping to find his receiver, but didn't get the chance. Got to keep moving those feet. You take it for, for uh, granted that those feet will always be under you. But in the fourth quarter, a lot of times you think they are, and they are not. Well, it's been pretty damp here all day. We had the morning rain. And uh, although the field's in tremendous condition. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful field, field uh, yeah. beautiful facility. Mm -hmm. uh, Elon in this uh, conference and 1AA and spending a lot of money to be representative. And I know they're going to get a lot of kids to come here. Second and 17 now from the 20-yard line. And Cruz in trouble, dumps it away to the near side. And uh, not much is going to be gained by that play as Palmer uh, catches a rare pass. That's only his 14th reception this season. Now look at this uh, beautiful stadium. We're up there in that press box. Maybe you can see me waving, but uh, we have a great view, and, and the fans here were really enjoying it. A lot of them are tailgating and coming back and forth. And this is the senior day here at Elon, but you can see they've invested in this beautiful, beautiful stadium. And this whole conference, the Southern Conference, is doing a great job of doing that. And there's Paul. That's my partner, Paul Olin, doing a great job up here. And uh, I'm, I'm hiding. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. 
But we're awake and, and we're really enjoying it and, and we're watching this Elon team uh, program is really going to be challenging in the future. Just to prove to you that we're actually here and not in the studio voicing over the game. Here's a throw to the near side, incomplete at the 33-yard line. That one zipped out there and uh, the intended receiver, Andrew Oak, arms weren't long enough. He needed the uh, arms of an oak tree to catch that one. Well, maybe that last picture wasn't the best one you saw all day, folks, but we've been getting some great pictures, and I just want to really compliment the guys on the cameras and the people in the trucks really been working with us great all year. I want to thank you guys and gals. Anthony Tarowski to do the punting. He had one block for a safety earlier. Teddy Kraft, number 85, waiting to receive it. Pressure eased up at the last moment, and Kraft going after it. Teddy with the ball at the midfield. At the 45 and down at the 44-yard line. Uh -oh. Loose ball. And uh, Elon says it has it. There's a pileup, and no official word yet. And it is, in fact, Elon's ball on the recovery. 11.44 to go. Elon needs to take advantage of these situations when they get the ball back. And hopping out of there, Mike Shelley looking pretty happy. And why not? Coming up with the ball might have been stolen in the pileup. <laughs> so we have a timeout here with 11.44 to go in the game. Georgia Southern with a 30-7 lead over Elon. What? Here on the campus of Elon University as the Phoenix is lit up and Perhaps the story behind that, in 1923 here, there was a fire and the school was rebuilt, thus rising from the ashes, the Phoenix. They've been playing football for 80-something years here. School founded in 1889. Cruz gets rid of it, and it's a completion. He's tried to hit Zach DeBusk all night long, and that's the first time out of three or four shots that he's finally made the reception to DeBusk, big number 99 for the first down. Well, uh, Big Zach had a good concentration on that play. He's limping a little because he got hit in the shins, but he decided he'd take that lick and hold on to the ball. Great job, big fella. Wofford holding on. Wow, defensive battle. Wofford, the champion of the Southern Conference. And on first and 10, Cruz with the play fake and looks to get rid of it. He arches this one deep down the field, and it is going to be incomplete. Almost intercepted as uh, Brian Simmer was the intended receiver. And on the coverage, nice job by James Young. Well, Cruz is going to learn that on that play, you, you throw it a little bit more to the outside. His man was open, but you see the ball was a little bit inside, helping the safety as opposed to helping his receiver. But uh, that's the kind of thing that you learn as you get better and you, and you do it more and more. Looking at that play selection, you can see between run and pass, Elon is closely more balanced, 25 to 13, as opposed to 59 to 6 for the Eagles. And Elon being forced to put the ball in the air because they're trailing by so much. That's been a problem all season long. Another long one thrown into a crowd and incomplete. So there's an example of perhaps of forcing a pass into... Uh, an area where he shouldn't throw it. Derek Neal, number 82, was the intended receiver. And among others, Tariq Mohammed in on the coverage. Well, Paul, you're down 30 to 7, 11 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. I think you got to put the ball up. And I think they're doing the right thing, hoping that a receiver uh, can make a play because the way that Georgia Southern's dominated ball control, it, there's no guarantee they'll even get the ball back in this game. Do you put it up that far down the field, though? Absolutely. Put it up there and let your big guys go up and get it you got to score three or four times to get back in this game. Third and ten now from the 45-yard line. No reason to believe another pass isn't coming up. But Cruz instead wants to run. He makes a move there and is tackled hard at the 43-yard line. He had to get to the 36 for a first down. Let's check in with Dan Jansen on the sidelines. Dan. Well, guys, have a look at the center for you on number 76, Brandon Mason. He's been fighting in there hard all night. The best thing about this guy, though, it's not so much what he does on the field, it's off the field. He's a, he's a junior on the football field, an academic senior. He's got a 3.8 grade point average. He's a double major, business administration and accounting. Five times president's list, dean's list, six times uh, athletic director, director's honor roll. Guy's got a bright future ahead of him on and off the football field. 
And he has not allowed a sack from the center position this year. So wow, Dan, if he's looking for a job, tell him to call me. The more flags in the secondary, and fingers being pointed at Elon this time. And Elon knows it's the guilty party, so they back up. Here is Lewis Foreman. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains fourth down. And so that means punting time. Anthony Tarowski will come on and kick the ball away. With 10-21 to go in the game. And 30-7, Elon trails. And Teddy Kraft is back at the 10. Dorowski hangs it up there. Kraft receives it at the 13. And is tackled from behind after picking up three or four yards. So with 10-11 to go in the game, 30-7, Georgia Southern on top. We'll be right back after a word from your local sponsors. This is the Football Network. On with you, first and 10 from the 18-yard line, and now they have Trey Hunter, number 14, in at quarterback, and he hands it off, and a big gainer. <laughs> Look at the amount Woo! of yards picked up to the 40-yard oh, line there by Jermaine Austin. Austin oh, was clearly over the 100-yard mark, and now with that one, it's, it's close to 100 and, uh, 130 yards. But, folks, this is the fourth quarter. Watch him just fly through the hole. My, oh, my. You know, you really see that kind of acceleration in the fourth quarter. He must be really well conditioned, highly motivated, and, and you can see why he leads the conference in Russia. Look at the numbers for Trey Hunter. And Hunter wisely hands the ball off and fighting for those extra yards. Brandon Andrews, number 34. Andrews uh, with uh, that uh, carry. Now they don't have his numbers on this uh, stat sheet. We'll have to take another look at uh, a different one. But Brandon Andrews has had a couple of nice runs today. And why they have left him off the stat sheet, we don't know. <laughs> we want to tell people what he's done. So second down and five from the 44-yard line. Two for 39. Okay. And now the pitch goes right side. And McMillan is hit hard and spilled. But looks to be short of the first down. And there's a penalty flag on the field. See, how many total penalties today? 15, uh, yeah, this one. Gonna go against Georgia Southern. Uh, we're getting close to the record now. That might be 15 yards. Well, that's their 15th penalty. They had 153 yards total for 14. Blocking below the waist again. And here is Shot block on the offense. 15 yard penalty in the end of the run. Repeat second down. 12 yards short of the record, the school record for Georgia Southern. 19 for 179, and today 15 for 168 so far. Nine minutes and running. And despite having the big lead, that has now prevented Georgia Southern from making the occasional mistake. Pitch coming to the near side, and Kraft is ankle tackle. He could not get away there the last moment, try as he might. Eddie Bell makes a stop. Eddie Bell among the leaders today in uh, assists and tackles with uh, close to seven or eight uh, total points when you add up the assists and the tackles together. Playing his uh, senior game, last game for Elon. Trey Hunter, the quarterback, in on his uh, first series as a junior. Replacing Chaz Williams, who scored three touchdowns today, rushing. Total of 39 yards on the ground. And here's the high pass incomplete. Thrown a bit too tall for Jesse McMillan, number 24. I know Jesse wishes he had that one back. Got a chance to get at least one hand on it. And in this Georgia Southern offense, you don't see many uh, passes, so you want to catch every one you get a chance to. Sean Holland is going to punt the ball away now. And Elon will get another chance to try and make a, a furious uh, effort at coming back. T.J. Clegg is deep to receive the punt from Holland. Well, a good return would certainly help a comeback bid is if they can't block it. Looks like they may have the block one, Paul. They got 10 men on the line of scrimmage. Only Holland's third punt of the game. 
and the kick is away. Fair catch, called for and made at the 32-yard line. So timeout, 8.02 to go in the game. Georgia Southern with a 37 lead over Elon on the Football Network. Today's game was brought to you by Carolina Ford Dealers, driving the Carolinas. BB&T, you can tell we want your business. Stedman Hawkins, keeping active people active. And Food Lion, extra low prices. Here on the campus of Elon University, Elon, North Carolina. It has been a long game as it turns out for Elon, trailing 30 to seven with 8.02 to go in the game. And it looks as though they're gonna finish up their season with an eight game losing streak. Anthony Cruz, six out of uh, seven out of 16 passing for 82 yards. 47 of those yards came on one play. And now he throws this one and it's picked. And it could be returned for a touchdown up the far sidelines and it is by Tariq Mohammed. Mohammed's third interception of the year. And that, that brought everybody on the Georgia Southern side to their feet. Outstanding, stepping in front, Tariq Mohammed intercepting, and it looked like he could go all the way, but it was a great hustle by uh, Rashad Palmer. So instead of a touchdown, my mistake, out of bounds at the three. And for Palmer, the running back, to hustle back on that, even if it looked like it was meaningless, it meant something to him, a senior maybe playing his last game. Well, no, in fact, uh, they're going for the uh, point after, so it was a touchdown. I, th I thought that replay showed him being knocked out of the three-yard line, to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah, it looked like it in this, on the sideline. It has the first down. That was first and ten to go. Maybe they don't want to run the score up. Well, it's now 37 to 7. We're going to have to take another look at that replay because I had initially called it a touchdown, but the replay seemed to clearly show that he was knocked out of bounds at the three. Who goofed? We've got to know. Mohammed steps in, and here he comes. And at the t Yeah. He's out of bounds at the two. His foot stepped out of bounds before he put that ball over the pylon, but they give him the touchdown. His foot touched out of bounds. But they give him the touchdown. Well, I haven't said anything. I'm still sitting here in shock. I mean, I'm looking at it, and I, I just knew that that was first and goal at the two, but can't see it all the time. And uh, fortunately for college football, we don't have instant replay. So the man down there was close. He saw him reach over the goal line. Maybe he was out of bounds. Maybe he wasn't. But as far as the score is concerned, touchdown, Georgia Southern. Dwayne Ives and T.J. Clegg get deep to receive the kickoff now from Dudley. 37 to seven. We have a little less than eight minutes to go in the game. And this is Ives at the 10 yard line. Hit, got away from an arm tackle attempt and is still on his feet as he steps out of bounds near the 30. Well, he got hit that time by his own men as many, as he, as many times as he got hit by Georgia Southern. Meanwhile, Wofford holds on and uh, now improves to 8-0 in the conference, 10-1 and yeah, overall. Yeah, got to congratulate everybody on that administration and staff. Uh, they, too, have been working hard to build and keep their program up at the top in this conference, and, and they finally broken through this year. Anthony Cruz returns at quarterback here after the touchdown, 37-7. Elon trails. And so now it's a handoff. And the Palmer tries the left side, breaks a tackle. He's going to add to his numbers as it uh, appears that they're going to decide, well, let's uh, let Rashad Palmer, the senior, uh, finish up big time here in front of his friends and family. Well, we could tell on that last hustle play and, and now on that run that he is not ready to finish his career. Palmer with 76 yards before that run. So. 
going to try and get him over the 100-yard mark. He came up a yard short last week against Appalachian State with 99. He's had three 100-yard rushing efforts this season. And he takes the ball again. But no gain on that run. So I think they're, they're, they're consciously trying to get him at least to the century mark today on his uh, final game for Elon. Well, I don't know if any team really tries to do uh, individual things for individual players. I mean, you do want to reward the players that, that work hard, but they weren't having much success passing the ball, and they've been running the ball well all year, giving the ball to Rashad Palmer. I don't think the coach would just intentionally give him the ball just to get the record, Some, unlike basketball coaches. Football coaches don't think that way usually. So now, second down and 10. And uh, the play clock had expired, so that is going to be another penalty. So Palmer with 90 yards. He's not going after any record. It's just, it's just uh, prior to the snap, delay of game on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains second down. He came into the game with 786 yards. 90 yards now. So getting close to the 1,000-yard mark. And for Elon, that's their eighth penalty. We've had 15 penalties for Georgia Southern. With six and a half to go in the game. Cruz looking to the right side. Zips one that's tip, tip, drill, and complete. It was nearly intercepted. It was right on the hands of the defender, but he couldn't hold on to it. Yeah, A.K. Keys, the cornerback, came up that time, and, and <laughs> he's going to be wishing he had that back. Boy, that ball got tipped by two or three people, and they practice it every day in a drill known as the tip drill. So on third and 15 from the 37-yard line, Meanwhile, Georgia Southern is trying to avoid a team record for penalty yards. And they were about uh, 15 yards away from matching that. Well, there's plenty of time. <laughs> 6.25 to go in the game. With Georgia Southern decidedly in front. Little screen pass to Palmer at the 40. And he wow. brought down a, one of those necktie tackles by Keyes. Well, Key says, since I can't get the interception, maybe I can show everybody how I can bring him down with one arm. <laughs> that was pretty impressive, grabbing uh, Mr. Palmer and just snatching him down. Big D back. So the punting team comes on. Anthony Tarowski will kick it away. And back to receive it is number two, Lewis Barr, with 552. Now, uh, there are great prospects here for another penalty on a punt. <laughs> uh, there are 11 men out there, so there are 11 opportunities. Here we go. Barr is going to fair catch it. That's uh, one way to eliminate yeah. the penalties. No return. Well, no chance for any sort of illegal blocks. That's right. The ball is at the 21. First Kind of hard to hold, you know. Well, if you can't get enough football on TV and you'd like to see more games, features, in-depth analysis, scores, and highlights, you need TFN, the football network. For football programming 24-7, call your cable operator and ask for TFN, the football network. 5.37 to go in the game. And the backup quarterback on his second series, Trey Hunter, keeping the ball himself as the clock continues to spin. Mike Seawalk, the head coach for Georgia Southern with 17 and seven record at the school. They're trying to go seven and four to finish up the season. This is the last game of the year for both teams. Well, a lot of people wondered when Bennett went to Navy, could they keep winning? And the running play to the outside. And once again, it is Jesse McMillan getting some late playing time out of Kingsport, Tennessee with the ball. And I have every reason to believe that Georgia Southern will continue that great tradition. Well, the pressure is on now for next season after uh, uh, being so successful and then having what they consider to be an off year to try and bounce back with Wofford continuing to build its program, Appalachian State building its program. There's going to be some keen competition in this uh, conference, and the football network is going to be there to cover it. Absolutely, and everybody's getting better, even us. <laughs> Quick pitch near side, 
And a gang tackling effort now. With the ball was Darius Smiley, who will occasionally plays some quarterback. He's a freshman out of Pensacola. First down. They just went over, Paul, 400 yards on over 70 plays. Well, Total they're, offense. They're getting close to their average. Their average is 412 yards. So just about right for Georgia Southern tonight, as it turns out, after what I'm sure they consider to be a slow start, sloppy play in the first half with a lot of penalties and only a 14 to 7 halftime lead. Well, there's your 12 yards. Well, that was Gersitz on the ball carrier, Tim Gersitz. And there is Jermaine Austin, just uh, with the helmet off, relaxed, and watching his teammates finish up this one. Yeah, that was always a great feeling when I came out the game and I could root my back up on the victory. Austin, 136 yards unofficially. And still another running play to uh -oh. Gerson's. And the flag is down. Wait a minute. Four eleven to go in the game, and the penalty is against Georgia Southern. Oh, uh, we're going to be close. That's, I think that's a 10-yarder. For Georgia Southern now, penalty number 16. Holding on the offense, 10-yard mm -hmm. penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Taking a look at some numbers concerning those penalties. 174 yards on 16 penalties today. The team record, 179 yards worth of penalties. And here's a short run up the middle for Gersitz. Tim Gersitz, a junior, had only carried the ball nine times prior to tonight. And so he's getting a chance to uh, be the, the go-to guy here in the late going with 339 and running remaining in this one. And Gersitz remains the lone setback behind the quarterback Trey Hunter. Let's go! Let's go! So the next penalty on Georgia Southern will set a team record for penalty yards. And here is the quarterback Hunter carrying the ball to the near side as the teammates bang together. We're going to take a look at uh, Jermaine Austin's day on videotape. Little big man, fullback, 5'8", bowling ball, He's super strong, super quick, great balance. And we've seen it all day, avoiding tacklers, coming right through the middle, often running between the guards for heavy yardage. Look at this run right there, power. You don't see many people beating him head on, that's for sure. Jermaine Austin, the sophomore, is our player of the game. As presenting sponsor of today's telecast, BB&T will donate $500 on the behalf of the school for the General Scholarship Fund to the Southern Conference. At the end of the year, the fund will be distributed among the members of the Southern Conference. Well, Jermaine Austin, our player of the game. Three minutes to go in this one. 37-7. Georgia Southern on top. Pitch comes to the near side and out of bounds quickly with the ball is Darius Smiley. I don't know if he was supposed to stay in bounds on that. You know, usually when you're having the lead and running the clock out, you want the clock to continue to run and running out of bounds, stop the clock. But with a 30-point uh, lead, I think they're okay this time. It was only 14-7 to and in the uh, at halftime with Georgia Southern on top, but now a different story in the second half as they made those uh, necessary adjustments that Coach Mike Seawalk had uh, talked about being necessary. Now let's see what happens on fourth and seven, an apparent punt. And the kick is away, high spinner. And this one is going to go into the end zone for the touchback. So Georgia Southern, lots of smiles, final game of the season. And now all these players, yeah, a lot of heart. All these players now can 
kind of relax and let their little injuries and bruises and everything else heal up now and get ready for uh, the, 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 fall, uh, the fall scrimmages. Well, their heart was in their coach's throat at the beginning of the game because it was such a raggedy start, and, and we're still seeing some of it at the end with all the penalties. There's your Georgia Southern mascot looking like he's pretty, or she. Uh, is pretty happy over there on the sidelines. Yes. But they started out very unfocused and, 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 and it didn't seem to be very motivated. Probably a little bit down, used to going to playoff games every year. But they're playing for a tradition and an Elon playing for pride. They both continue to play hard. And it just it took a matter of time before the coach's game plan began to take effect wearing Elon down. Now what is the usual uh, schedule now for players after a season ends here in, in the late November? What do they do? Take time off, and then when do they start getting ready? There's a penalty, but this one is on Elon. What's their usual off-season schedule? Chasing girls. A lot of weight room work as well? No, chasing girls. I mean, unless the girls come to the weight room. I mean, you've been dedicating so much time since last July. The first thing that you want to do is go see your academic advisor to see if you're going to make it through the semester <laughs> and stay eligible, and then you resume your social life. Well, there is 400 plus, 439 total offense, marking the 18th time in the last 26 games for Georgia Southern, over the magic 400 mark for them. But Her football has become year-round, Paul, like you suggested, and I'm sure they'll be in the weight room before you know it. This is Palmer across the line of scrimmage, maybe for one yard, so second down and nine. Palmer, at last report, was uh, getting close to the century mark. And the other great thing about a conference like that is you really get to respect your opponent. And after working with your opponents like this, and you get to know them, and who knows later on in life in some business deal or something, you'll see them across the table from you. Palmer with 90 yards on 17 carries. Yeah, and half of that came on that touchdown run of 55. Oh, yeah. So they've had him pretty much bottled up most of the day. Working out of the I formation, Cruz, the freshman quarterback, hands it off to Palmer. Look at that burst. And he's over the century mark and uh, looking at gaining maybe 50 yards on a run like that. Wow. To midfield, it's going to be a run of close to 40 yards instead. And clearly now over the 100-yard mark. And Rashad Palmer also has a lot of heart, folks, because he could have just laid down and took it easy. But no, he still wants to compete at a high level. And you can see the effort on that run. Watch him as he hits the hole. He goes to the right. And then he cuts back to his left. Look at that cut. Switches hands with the ball, but just couldn't get around the corner. Great effort. So 916 total yards this year for Palmer. He gets the call again, and he continues to run like he still has fresh legs, hey. charging to the 44-yard line, the 45-yard line, short of the first down by about five yards. Yeah, positive yardage, and I'm telling you, Elon has a lot of positive things. Although you don't see the positive things on the scoreboard, you see the growth of their young freshman quarterback. I mean, if he's a freshman, he usually is young. So <laughs> we see him uh, getting older by the snap, and, and that experience is really going to help them next year. So that's uh, four games this season now over the century mark for Rashad Palmer. 26 carries today. He has carried as many as 36 times this season. Cruz with his completed pass inside the 40-yard line. And the clock is inside a minute with 48 seconds to go. And I'm sure now on the sidelines you're going to start to see some emotion. That's a first down throw. As this clock winds down for many, as I said before, it will be the last game. And it's a lot of feelings. A lot of work has gone into this. Cruz, 9 out of 20 in passing with one interception, his 16th of the season. So it's been a learning year for him as he lobs this one uh, incomplete near the goal line. That stops the clock with 22 seconds to go. And you can see the camaraderie and sportsmanship. A lot of times you don't see that at the major schools. But these guys all get to know each other, and they compete like crazy and they become good friends later on in life. And, and it's an experience that is so unique to football, a group, a team, sacrificing together, dedicated to a goal, and to being able to uh, be disciplined enough to reach it at the end of the year. A lot goes into it. A lot has to be said about the coaching staff who cares for these kids and the academic advisors that help them and the professors that let them get those papers in late. We want to thank all of them 
on behalf of the football players. Second down and 10 from the 37-yard line. And Cruz again looking far down the field and lofts it in the direction of his receiver. And a catch is made for the touchdown. Wow, what a reception by Reggie McCutcheon. I, I take that back. My mistake, not McCutcheon, but Dan Brooks. I, I questioned about throwing those long passes, but that one pays off. Well, I told you, if you throw enough of them, eventually your receiver, who always has an advantage because he knows where the ball is, and that time the defensive back didn't know where the ball was, clear advantage, great catch, staying in bounds, and that's what Elon's going to remember going into the offseason. Not the score of this game. Well, just the second touchdown pass of the season for Cruz, and now on what apparently is going to be a two-point conversion attempt to throw into the end zone, and it's picked off there. So the conversion fails as the clock reads just 14 seconds to go in the game. And Elon gets the, their first score since all the way back in the first quarter. As Brooks catches his first down pass, uh, touchdown pass of the season and only his second reception of the season. His other reception was good for 70 yards earlier this year. Well, I want to take the opportunity to thank our uh, producer, Rowan Fishback, and our director for all the great work that they've done. They should we work together as a team. And Paul and I, fortunately, have a game next week, don't we, partner? Absolutely, and we'll be back next year with these Southern Conference games. Uh, the football network dedicated to, to bringing you the best of Division I AA. Uh, uh, you know, a level of football that doesn't get enough coverage, but that'll, that's a different story now with the football network. Yeah, no BCS in this deal, so money hasn't really uh, uh, corrupted the game like many believe has happened in Division One level. And these truly are scholar-athletes. So now the final seconds of the game will be played out here as Lewis Barr is standing deep to receive the kickoff. And Coach Mike Seawalk is happy to finish up the season with a victory. 37 to 13 is the score, and he will go to work as he uh, tries to improve his team for next year. Lewis Barr stands at about the, uh, oh, the 26-yard line. We'll see if it's going to be an onside kick, and it is, and it's grabbed by Southern. This is Teddy Kraft out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. The clock ran a few extra seconds after he went out of bounds, so it reads five seconds to go in the game now. Probably should have stopped it at eight, but it's a, a moot point. Well, Teddy Kraft is really skilled, and, and we can see when he gets the ball that he really knows what to do with it. Punt returner, wide receiver, and on the hands team on that uh, onside kick did a great job on it. So now we'll probably see the quarterback for Georgia Southern take a knee, Trey Hunter, as he trots back onto the field. And this game will be history, and the season will be history for both teams. We mentioned that the last time that uh, Elon won a ball game was back on September the 20th, a 14 to nothing win over East Tennessee State, and nothing since. And now a surge ahead by the quarterback, Hunter, as the clock runs out. So the game comes to an end. There were an extraordinarily high number of penalties for both sides as uh, Georgia Southern came within something like nine yards of setting a team record for penalty yardage. But they also put 37 points on the board to win it 37 to 13. As the two coaches, Al Seagraves on the right, and Mike Seawalk, on the left, they're good buddies, and uh, exchanging the pleasantries, and uh, they both now will face their off-season challenges. We're going to update the standings now. Some teams have a games next Saturday, the 22nd. Wofford was a winner today to improve on that record. 
to 10 and 1 overall in Appalachian State at 7 and 4 and Georgia Southern at 7 and 4 overall but 5 and 3 in the conference. Appalachian State 6 and 2. Elon finishes 2 and 10 in East Tennessee State at 4 and 7 overall giving up football. And the rest of the schools in the Southern Conference. This was the first year that Elon played in the Southern Conference. So now they they certainly know what they're up against in terms of the competition and will try to improve behind uh, their freshman quarterback, Anthony Cruz, who will come back next year with the uh, vast experience uh, from what he uh, was able to absorb this season. And Elon under Al Seagraves in his eighth season this year, his record now 40 and 49 at uh, Elon. And he hopes to uh, have a, a few more able-bodied players next season. And let's go downstairs now to the sidelines and Dan Jansen. Dan? All right, Paul. Coach, you finished up the season with a win. It may not have been the prettiest, but uh, you got to feel good about the, the end of the game. I felt good about the effort. I thought there were some things out there. I just kind of thought some of the things got taken out of hand. It's, you know, on a toss sweep, I never, you know, we had two penalties called out there. We hadn't had anybody called all year. So, but that's the way that goes. I mean, I, we got to do a better job. Apparently, we, we did a nice job rushing the football again, throwing a touchdown pass. I felt good for Teddy and uh, felt like we had opportunities to do some things, that, uh, and we did them. Uh, great to have this little one here, too. Uh, Jermaine did a nice well, job. We're going to get to him in a second, but thanks for your time. Yeah. And uh, hey, next next season, uh, well, this will be a good thing. start. We got three. We got three. Uh, we got three game win streak. You never can tell. Uh, I don't know how it's going to happen over next weekend. And just uh, do the best you can. But I guarantee you, Georgia Southern is going to go ahead and start grinding right off the bat. Thanks, Coach. Paul. Thank you, Dan. And shortly, we will be back down on the field with Jermaine Austin. We're going to take a break. 37-13 is the final score. Georgia Southern over Elon. 